There has been, uh, I think, tremendous misinformation in the put out uh, by nutritionists and medical doctors over the past 50 years. Um, I think one of the one of the huge disasters was the um, obsession with fat in our diet. The the promotion of the idea that fat makes us fat and that healthy food, the essence of healthy food is low fat food. Uh, during the, the era when this idea was especially dominant in the 70s, this was when the Ornish and Pritikin philosophies became very strong. Um, I think this is when a lot of spas started in this country. When I go to spas in this country, I don't very often, but when I go to check them out, the menu served there are still almost all low-fat menus. That's still the focus of what people do. During the era of low-fat obsession, uh, all these non-fat and low-fat products came out on the market, and during that period, Americans got fatter and fatter. You know, what is wrong with that picture? Clearly, something is very wrong there. You know, then, then we had this uh, sort of Atkins bubble, in which sort of a reaction to this was, you know, it, it wasn't fat, carbohydrates now became the thing that were demonized, and we had this no-carbohydrate, low-carbohydrate era. At both of these camps, I mean, have some pieces of the truth. Uh, actually, I think the Atkins camp is much closer to the truth, but both of them also got big pieces of this wrong. I don't know how many of you have heard of the book that's been out recently that's causing a lot of controversy. I recommend reading it. It's not, not the easiest read. It's called Good Calories, Bad Calories. The author is Gary Taubes, T-A-U-B-E-S, published by Knopf. He is a... Uh, a science writer for the New York Times, a very meticulous researcher of literature. And he has gone through the, the medical literature very carefully on nutrition research. And some of the, con the conclusions he comes to are quite startling. First of all, there is not a shred of evidence that fat makes you fat. Uh, secondly, he, he feels that, the, um, you know, that all of the evidence points to a disturbance in metabolism, a biochemical disturbance in metabolism in which insulin is the key player. Um, insulin really determines how calories are used, how energy is distributed in the body. And that, that, this disturbance of insulin-regulated metabolism um, is genetically influenced. A lot of us have these genes, which we mentioned last night, inherited probably from our hunter-gatherer days that make us very efficient at storing up calories when they're available. And it's, it's that genetic constitution in the present environmental climate in which food is available all the time and the kinds of foods that we've made available are particularly full of quick digesting carbohydrates that cause spikes in blood sugar, uh, that this provokes the disturbance in people. His, uh, the other idea that he presents that's fascinating is that over, you know, th that for years he says there's almost been a religious-like belief in the idea that it's calories in equals calories out, and that the solution is to decrease intake and increase exercise, and that therefore people who are obese are eating too much or not exercising enough, and it's this is a problem of, of will, of motivation. Uh, he talks, you know, how, how much over the past 50 years there's been a tendency to even recommend psychiatric or psychological intervention for these problems. His, the evidence that he presents is very strongly that overeating and underactivity are in fact symptoms of an underlying metabolic disorder. Um, that when the body, uh, that this is, these are ways that the body uh, adjusts its energy state by reducing activity or by increasing intake. And this is not something that's under voluntary control. Um, I, I think he's got a lot of things right in this book, also some things not quite right. So I don't think anybody has yet put together the whole picture. But I would say that all the evidence points to carbohydrates as being the really significant piece of this. And it's the way that we've changed carbohydrate foods that I think are the most significant thing that we've done wrong in the past 50 years. And particularly, we have flooded our diets with kinds of carbohydrate foods that digest quickly and convert to blood sugar rapidly, cause spikes in blood sugar, which cause 
releases of insulin. And over time, in many people, I mean, tau seems to make it look like all people, but it's not all people. There's a spectrum of, of sensitivity to carbohydrates. You know, we all know people who are rail thin, who can eat anything they want in any quantity, and they never gain weight, and they tend to be active. They, have, they do not have this genetic constitution. Um, you know, it's very annoying to see them, and the only, uh, <laughs> the only consolation is that when the famine comes, they're gone. 